So welcome, I'm really, really excited to show you our house, uh, but it starts outside and uh, it took us a while to show you this house because we wanted to live in and enjoy and feel the space and iterate with our neighbors, with the actual street. Um, and so you can see that from a very empty street with bins, we try and create some life. We brought in uh, plants, but also planters. Um, our neighbor, uh, Colin, is a maker. Uh, he, he kind of reclaims a lot of stuff. You'll see a lot of things like chimneys and, uh, and planters that are made from reclaimed timber. You'll probably recognize our style. We kept on discussing about how we can make that street much nicer and bring nature even before you reached your house. Um, and so I'm really happy because this creates also privacy uh, without uh, impeding too much on the street. And you'll see our um, opening here. We've actually dug uh, because we realized that we own part of that street here uh, from the council. And so therefore we reclaim part of the street. There wasn't any space here below. And you'll see from below that this is actually open with some uh, glass uh, pavements, which helps uh, bring light in the lower ground. So come in. Um, and uh, it's my pleasure to welcome you. Uh, and as we said in the time, this is my crib. <laughs> Come through. Welcome. Welcome to our house. It's such a pleasure to take you in. It took us so long to reach that level. It was so challenging, you know, and actually we put Galaxia, the temple we did at Burning Man, and uh, it was a hard one. It was a very hard one. But to be honest, this house was probably even harder. It was harder. It took longer. It was very personal. You know, it was me and Sandy, my wife where we just try to find an alignment. I think for a relationship, it's extremely challenging, let alone for an architect who lives in his own house. But it was an exercise in harmony and finding our language, our common language, an exercise in alignment. And we really wanted it to represent our values, values of um, circularity, values of well-being. And all these were very, very important for us. And I hope you'll see it in this house. So there are very important items. Maybe I'll start by the space itself. The space is very high, as you can see. And so we wanted everything to match this height. You see those doors, giant solid oak doors are all extremely high, which gives this slight impression of temple quality, sacred space. Um, and then the clay is extremely natural. It replaces what you have usually, which is paint, plasterboard. In this case, we have clay boards and then clay on top as render. And you see it's a bit imperfect, but it gives that spa-like quality, a quality of, of imperfection that admits to nature and lets the material do its thing. And this was very important for us. It's a lower ground flat, so ground and lower ground. So it was extremely important for us to open up, open up. We opened up the facade. We relieved, you know, these big, big uh, windows, which, which created this natural light coming through. And then we have these ground floor openings, which makes you feel like, wow, there's more. There's you know, it, it doesn't feel like you're going downstairs. It feels like you're going to a new world, a kind of oasis in a city. And this was very important for us. Follow me. This is our bedroom. We'll start by the, the sort of place where, uh, you know, that is uh, dearest to us, of course. And um, a part of the exercise was to reveal the inner beauty of this house. And so when we came in, we removed everything. We removed all these plasterboards, all these things that people usually hide and we try and reveal what's behind. And we saw these beautiful London bricks, so we wanted to express them. Here, there was this kind of natural join, so we placed these, uh, these shelves inside. We were learning about the space as we go. You can see from these custom wardrobes that we added a mirror. The mirror helped emphasize the entire space so that the, the brick wall will be uh, highlighted even more. Um, you remember, probably uh, that all of this was uh, done with small windows and we were it was very key especially in London to have very very large windows and so we went as big as we could uh, without the planning uh, application becoming a problem which is why it has these slats the slats help create a bit of privacy for the neighbor whilst also filtrating the, the light that comes in when it's the summer um, but it also allowed us to have bigger windows I'll explain this as we go to the facade You'll see a lot of the details, the window seals, um, uses uh, natural ply, and, uh, and you'll see a lot of these different um, sort of ceiling arrangement, which, you know, this is really for the MBHR, the, the system that we have in the bathroom that I'll explain. 
um, to come and do its thing across the house so that it purifies the air. And then you have these mandalas. So you'll see a lot of our, um, let's call them bioproducts. We call them bioproducts because they are uh, products that we 3D printed in our space at FabPub. And they matter because they're all made of sugar. They're made of compostable materials. Um, and so they allow to create a sense of circularity um, using materials that are um, renewables and compostable. So this is the mandala. It's a, it's a sacred geometry, but it also uh, represents the idea of letting go. You know, mandalas are done for a long time. They are they're worked out in, 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 in rituals that last for a long time, and then they're blown away and go back to their state of nothingness, you know, creation and destruction. Uh, for me, it's a cycle that's very important to express uh, in our architecture and in our products. So follow me. Uh, this is the bathroom. It's also got really high doors, but in this case, they're sliding, which helps with optimizing the space, which is pretty tight here. So if you come in, we have two worlds, the world of ceramics and the world of glass. So uh, this is recycled glass, and they're a very intricate pattern, whereas here you have large scale um, cer uh, ceramics tiles. It's also very important to say this is the center space of the house in terms of where it's located and therefore we use it as a central lung of the house. So it's got what we call an MVHR, which is a mechanical ventilation heat recovery system, which is a way to get the air from outside, purify the air from inside whilst keeping the same temperature inside. So it's a key aspect of the well-being of the house and helps purify the air without losing energy. This is the transition. This is the transition from upstairs to downstairs. Um, from one space to the next, from the entrance to the cocooning um, living room. This space I absolutely love. It's the space where we come and live, we come and relax. And it all happens through this very, very porous staircase that doesn't block any light, which is extremely important knowing that this is a lower ground. And so we really wanted to create a staircase that is fully open, but create a sense of, of journey, a sense of transition. And so to bring people in that journey, we have that balustrade. The balustrade is uh, made from 3D printed components in sugar mixed with wood. And you can see the geometry itself reflects back to the geometry at the back. This little um, strip, just like the lining on a suit, um, helps you um, go through the space and create continuity with the kitchen. And you'll see that the kitchen continues with the strip with a different material. So there is an echo between material, between geometry, so that things don't feel like isolated elements, but that there is a real story along the journey of the house. So that's really important. And it creates a bit of an ecosystem of textures, an ecosystem of materials. And um, all of it being quite uh, porous and open um, in a space that is otherwise quite um, dark and, um, and small. So you probably remember what we did. We dug this whole space. We dug about a meter down um, because upstairs was such a grand space. And so when we came down here, it was extremely important to gain some height. And all of this was closed. So all of this was closed. There was a toilet here. Um, there was an access here for fire, which we then translated back to the fire door upstairs, which allowed us to open up fully this and still comply with regulation. So we demolished this wall here. We created that sense of transition um, through um, open staircase, but also through art and through telling this journey um, through these different little elements that speak to one another. So then follow me. <laughs> Remember what I mentioned about the strip? Well, you can see it transforming into this back, backsplash here, which is made of ceramics. So we go from clay uh, wall to ceramics wall uh, using the same herringbone pattern. And that um, color also reflects back to the color of the, of the line. All our worktops are um, hard oak. It was really important because a lot of the worktops that you see when you're here, it's a quartz worktop or, um, you know, a lot of them are just made of plastics. And we'd never ask where materials come from. We hardly say, <clears throat> what is this made of? And throughout our journey with Sandy, that's the key question we kept on asking. What is this made of? What is, where does it come from? Where could it end up after we use it? 
because we try and think about the afterlife, not just the provenance of things. So it was a bit of a jigsaw, um, this house, because we found things along the way and had to reinvent a little bit how we arranged the space. For example, this was the limit of our uh, kitchen before, and we dug below the street in order to win a room and then raised the question, well, why do we put our services? And so, you know, washing machine, boilers and so on. We found a little nook where we could do that. And that nook was also a way to articulate the space that's behind that where there is a new bathroom. Remember the bathroom that was there where the staircase was? We took it out and we put it all the way back here. And it's here. The shower is behind that wall in the continuity of that uh, kitchen. Um, so it's, uh, it's been really challenging. You'll see it from the other side. Um, but this space optimization helped us uh, take advantage of the space whilst not losing all these um, practical um, rooms. So come with me. So you'll notice a lot of uh, niches and nooks, um, and a lot of it has to do with what we could do in the space. We had um, the MDHR hole, all that ducting coming through the space, and we had to you know, cover the ducting. And so you'll see a lot of these uh, outlets and inlets. They're the ones that go all the way back to the MDHR in the bathroom. And uh, we actually made it in our space. We laser cut um, custom outlets for it to fit, which was a real exercise in itself. You see it's this black um, you know, um, articulation that allows the air to come out, pure air to come out. And so this then created a duct uh, casing, which continues in the new room. And so we just created a bit of a line, which we then continued all the way to the, to the end and created all these different spaces that we could articulate. So we did two of these niches, one for books uh, and so on, and then one uh, for the TV. And so this separates the space in two with the living, uh, the, the kitchen area, the, the table. By the way, Sunny is here. She's a bit camera shy. <laughs> But it's really nice to, uh, to um, have done this together. You know, I'm a little bit more on the uh, overall space articulation. And when we saw that space, I think I immediately thought, oh, this is great. This is a great canvas for our creativity. And, uh, and Sandy was like, this, this guy's crazy. And, uh, and then along the way, though, I think what I don't have is that sort of detailed, uh, practical mindset that Sandy uh, excel at and so we found a real nice balance between um, the overall volumetric you know this sense of oasis and uh, Sandy's attention to detail and desire for everything to be extremely efficient extremely practical and I think that was very um, uh, very helpful for me as an architect to, to define a new language together with my wife but also for Sandy to uh, push her preconception of what maybe a cottage style might be uh, with elements that are a bit unusual. And, and so we found a real harmony together, which was very nice. So continuing in our uh, little paradise, this is the space where we relax. Um, you'll notice a lot of patterns that speak to one another. Uh, for me, this is extremely inspiring to see these patterns, to explore geometry. Um, and, and these are ways to structure the space. Um, you have, you know, this language of the herringbone that continues on our carpet. Um, these are carpets that are made from natural materials. We always interrogate, you know, is this natural material? And by natural, I mean coming from the earth, meaning um, something that can grow, a renewable material, not something that is uh, extracted, but something that can grow. And we, ha we hardly ask this question. We hardly say, well, you know, I love this sofa, but what is it made of? And most of the sofas we found were polyester. And we just started wondering why that is the case and, and came across some really nice alternatives just by asking, you know, people don't always know what things are made of. And so it's very important to start asking these questions. And so this uh, sofa, for example, uh, is made, of, um, um, is made of, of, of linen, but it has this wax, beeswax protection, uh, which prevents it from being um, stained. And so it's this kind of innovation. I'm just like, well, why, why is it more common? So welcome to our extra room. Uh, this is a room that we really literally dug below the street. Um, and so it's a very exciting, um, space for me because it's a space that just didn't exist and I'm standing here where tons of earth was 
And this was a really massive challenge. You can imagine that if you dig through the street, the street just wants to collapse back. So we had to hold it, and it was like a zombie apocalypse. We had to hold it with all kinds of prop until we could put the bricks one at a time in order to actually retain uh, from everything collapsing. And this was probably one of the most stressful moments because we also discovered that there were pipes and then the pipes started bursting. And then we were just in this mode of what's going on and our neighbor is saying, your pipe has burst, it's all going to collapse. And you have to imagine that this here is the facade of the, in the street. And so there is a portal here, a portal made of steel that was holding the entire uh, building above. And it was propped before the portal was here. So you could imagine that everything was moving pieces and it was extremely scary. But actually, you know, thanks to our engineers, the contractors, we all worked together to make sure that everything was smooth. Uh, but it was definitely one of the stressful moments uh, in our journey. And, but it was totally worth it. You know, the light that it brings to the space at the back, it means that you feel like something is there and that you're not in a, in a lower ground place. Um, and so, um, something that's really nice here um, is that as we had these clay boards, um, some pipes, some steel pipes are going through them, which means that the walls are heated, which is something that's really unusual. And you can feel the heat through the, through the wall. This is something we've done all the way uh, in the ceiling of the space as well. And it brings this sort of cocooning feel, uh, which was very important to um, keep the warmth inside the space. So come through, um, this is our um, extra bed, and then you have this um, mandala stool that we use also as a side table. Um, it's very nice, this uh, object, because it's extremely versatile. You'll see it all across our spaces, and they're being used for so many uh, different applications, side tables, or just a general table that people use, or to sit on. And I think that's uh, part of the self-testing. You know, this whole house is about tasting my own medicine and seeing if, uh, if it works for us uh, before, that we, before we putting it out, out there for other people. So um, you'll see it in multiple places. And so come through. This is the space that I was mentioning is very intricate. Uh, so the, this is our services. Um, and so you see that it created this little bathroom um, at the back of the services. So this is our island with all the boilers and the, uh, the washing machine. And this, this created a little nook that we then used for this shower. So the shower is made from uh, the recycled glass that you saw upstairs, so it, re it, it creates a reminder. There's also these two zones, you know, the kind of glass uh, zone and the ceramic zones, which also creates these little spaces in which we could place uh, small things. So this is a mini ensuite, uh, but it helps create this um, sort of really lovely, warm little room for our guests uh, to come uh, with us. So guess what happened to the bricks that were uh, at the back in the room I was showing you? Well, we kept them, we try and keep as much as we could, and then we place them here. So these are the reclaimed bricks that were holding the earth before uh, we had the room at the back. And so we created these planters. The whole idea when we got the house was to create a little oasis. And so we slowly planted these, and it's still the beginning, but it's very exciting to see it becoming this little green oasis in the middle of London. Very importantly, this wood here is called keboni. And often when you use decking, uh, you use a, a timber that is either um, a tropical timber, which is really bad for the environment, or it's like a decking that is mixed with epoxy, um, which is petroleum plastic, which is really bad. So keboni is actually a pine. It's very common in, uh, um, in Europe and it's um, mixed with bioplastics. And so in the same spirit as our 3D print, this timber is here to, um, you know, to be as uh, environmental as we could. And we used it for the benches, but we also used it for the facade. So let me show you the facade. The facade is a very iconic piece of uh, our project. And what it is, is that it created this um, floating uh, volume in space. So we created a gradient, a sort of musical gradient, that goes from dense uh, to open and then dense again. So it almost gives it a sort of three-dimensional um, nature, almost like it was a, a, a conic um, space. Um, and when it's all flat, of course, and it has opaque space and windows. And so it's to blur the limit between 
the transparent and the opaque. We also did this uh, for planning application purpose because we couldn't have it all transparent. And so we needed something to prevent light pollution for our neighbors. So that facade is uh, floating against a completely open space. And that open space is really what creates the oomph of the volume because you're suddenly completely leveled. You see the ground floor is then almost flush with the outside. And so there's a seamless continuity from the inside of the space to the outside of the, outside of the space, which is something that really participates in this sort of cocooning feeling of nature. I really love this collaboration with Sandy, with the team to work on this house. We had a, a fantastic team working on this house and you know, from the engineers to, uh, um, to the, the, the teams of architects that worked with me on this, I, I, I was learning all the time. Um, and so I hope we can continue to learn together um, and that we create communities of um, people that um, create in 3D and create in uh, eco 3D together. <laughs> <laughs>